Hey everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca, our 17th lesson on air law and the Canadian aviation regulations. This uh, lesson's on aircraft maintenance requirements. This is a pretty important lesson, I think, because a lot of uh, people don't understand any of the laws that require or the regulations that are pertinent to maintaining an aircraft, especially people that own their own airplanes. They think uh, they really don't have many responsibilities, but the truth is they still have just as many responsibilities as they do as when they're flying the airplane. So here's the number one rule. The aircraft owner is responsible for all maintenance on the aircraft. So a lot of people think, well, no, I'm not a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. I'm not a mechanic. That is not my job. Uh, yes, it is your job. You are the aircraft owner. You are responsible for it. However, as we'll discuss later, uh, you are responsible for it. And once you assign that work to the aircraft maintenance engineer, which you're for the most part responsible for doing, it becomes the aircraft maintenance engineer who is responsible for making sure that the that the maintenance that they do is done correctly. However, you are still responsible for uh, identifying defects and or telling the mechanic to identify defects for you. So all aircraft must be maintained in accordance with the type design and airworthiness directives. So this often there are maintenance manuals where they the manufacturer will say, this is how you have to maintain the aircraft. There's also a document that's called AC4313, which is acceptable uh, procedures and methods of repairing aircraft. Once aircraft uh, maintenance is done, an AME must release the aircraft. And they do this by signing a maintenance release. And this states what work has been done. And it states that the work meets the applicable airworthiness standards. Not uh, a maintenance release is not required for elementary work, such as removing seats, but you still may need uh, a journey log entry, and you may need a journey log entry following a maintenance test flight. Here's an example of a maintenance release. Engine installed into YAC S2 GC BSS, and then they talk about the airframe hours, everything that they did, and then they sign it. This is actually a British one. Uh, so this is a typical uh, maintenance release, and uh, and you can take a look at that. If you have an opportunity, look through the journey log book on, your, on the airplane that you fly typically and see the maintenance done. And that's how a maintenance release looks like. And you should become familiar with those maintenance releases. Aircraft have to be maintained in accordance with an approved maintenance schedule. So for a commercial operator, uh, they apply to Transport Canada and they say, okay, we're going to change the engine every this many hours. We're going to repack the bearings this many hours or this much calendar time. We're going to do this at this time. For private aircraft, small private aircraft, there's kind of a blanket maintenance schedule uh, contained in CAR 625 Appendix B and C. B covers what has to be covered on an annual inspection. And C covers things that are out of, what are called out of phase items. So, uh, let's just say a tachometer check or uh, checking an ELT battery or a transponder every two years. However, uh, despite this, it's still a good idea to follow a manufacturer's maintenance schedule as well. Uh, so these are just the minimums, like once a year you have to change the oil, but if you fly the aircraft more often, most manufacturers say change the oil every 50 hours or even 25 hours. It's a good idea to follow that as well. Here's an example of how a maintenance schedule looks like for, this is probably a Cessna 172. Uh, you can see here on the top right, um, they, they specify a special inspection uh, where they have a note here. And then if you look in the footnotes, it tells you when you have to do it. But let's say every 200 hours right here, well, every 200 hours you have to inspect the spinner bulkhead, the bolts and the nuts. Whereas if you look here, every 50 hours, you have to do things like check the engine oil screen and, and things like that. So this is what an aircraft maintenance engineer would look at and uh, companies and you as an owner, if you own an aircraft, should be tracking your aircraft as well. Let's say every 50 hours, you just tell them to, to do all these items or tell, sorry, tell the aircraft maintenance engineer to do all these items. Here's a nice picture. Um, after an abnormal occurrence, you have to inspect the aircraft. Uh, you, it's usually done by an aircraft maintenance engineer, but the pilot command can do it if there's no disassembly required. So something abnormal happens, but you just need to look at uh, 
uh, a flap or something like that, uh, or, or look outside for external damage, you're allowed doing that as a pilot in command as well. Here's another funny uh, picture of like an ATR 42 or 72. I'm not sure what happened here. Um, it's missing a landing gear and it wasn't when they landed. Let's review this. Aircraft require maintenance release signed by an enemy following any maintenance work. Pilots and owners can do elementary work on their aircraft, such as oil changes, tire change, battery change, et cetera. Keep in mind, it has to be the owner and they also have to be a pilot. Just because you're a pilot doesn't mean you can do maintenance work, elementary work on uh, somebody else's aircraft. You have to maintain an aircraft in accordance with approved maintenance schedules, such as CAR 625, Appendix B and C, and you have to inspect an aircraft following any abnormal occurrence. Who can sign a maintenance release? A, the pilot, B, an AME, C, aircraft owner, D, aircraft a mechanic with ACA authorization for type. So remember, it is the owner's responsibility for maintenance, but it is the AME that actually does the maintenance. So the correct answer, B. Who is responsible for ensuring that proper maintenance is done on the aircraft? A, an aircraft maintenance engineer, the aircraft owner, the pilot, and D, the pilot's husband, because I'm so woke because my wife's the pilot actually, so. And they say it's the aircraft owner. Once the aircraft maintenance work is assigned to an AME, who is responsible to ensure that the maintenance is done according to the manufacturer's specification or acceptable techniques and practices? Well, this time, this is the aircraft maintenance engineer's responsibility. The owner gives that work to the AME. The AME makes sure that it's done correctly. That uh, concludes this lesson on aircraft maintenance requirements. We have two more lessons to go. Thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you on the next lesson.